crazy with fury, I will stain my rifle red while slaughtering any enemy that falls in my hands. My nostrils dilate while savoring the eric odor of gunpowder and blood. With the death of my enemies, I prepare my being for the sacred fight and join the triumphant proletariat with the bestial howl. Blind hate against the enemy creates a forceful impulse that cracks the boundaries of natural human limitations, transforming the soldier in an effective, selective, and cold-killing machine. A people without hate cannot triumph against the adversary. To send men to the firing squad, judicial proof is unnecessary. These procedures are the archaic bourgeois details. This is a revolution. A revolutionary must become a cold killing machine motivated by pure hate. We must create the pedagogy of the wall. The wall is the reference to the wall where Shea's enemies stood before his firing squad. I am not Christ or a philanthropist. Old lady, I am all the contrary of a Christ. I fight for the things I believe in with the weapons at my disposal and try to leave the other men dead so that I don't get nailed to the cross or any other place. If any person has a good word for the previous government, that is good enough for me to have him shot. Shea wanted the result of the Cuban Missile Crisis to be an atomic war. What we affirm is that we must proceed along the path of liberation, even if this cost millions of atomic victims. In fact, if Christ himself stood in my way, I, like Nietzsche, would not hesitate to squish him like a worm. Let me say, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, that the true revolutionary is guided by great feelings of love. It's a sad thing not to have friends, but it's even sadder not to have enemies. That, folks, was the... Uh, often touted great revolutionary Shea Guevara. And this is All Minus One. Please, if you like my content, like, share, and subscribe. So guys, today um, I just wanted to cover some things with Shea. And, and Shea's this revolutionary figure that's Seen by all kinds of people as, well, this wonderful dude. And he was a great, he freed so many people. He also murdered many, many folk. The left loves murderers, though. They love rapists. They love criminals. They tout them always as their, their own personal gods. Because the reality is, is the people who are progressives, who are far left-leaning are uh, demonic and satanic in their beliefs. Might makes right to them. They don't care how they get to where they get to. The ends always justify the means. And it doesn't matter how many necks they have to stomp on because they're the actually, the, they're the compassionate ones. They're the ones that really, they know the truth. They know it. They know it so well. Because they have the truth, and they have the correct moral perspective, it doesn't matter who they kill. You know what that's called, folks? That's called a zealot. And it's a dangerous, dangerous thing. <sighs> so I want to go through, actually, and do something a little bit different today, and that is show you a juxtaposition of far-left, Communist socialist propaganda praising Shea and basically run of the mill news articles or statements or interviews about who Shea was and also his own, uh, within his own words, as I just read to you. So, here we're going to start off with some commie rhetoric. 
from Comrade, Comrade Flanagan, Marxist political analyst. Okay. Was Shea Guevara a racist mass murderer? This was September 22nd, 2020, so quite recently. A non-communist cannot answer this question alone. Che Guevara was a communist because given the options of political systems which can defeat the evil of capitalism, Marxism-Leninism, communism, is the only practical, time-proven, effective means of doing so. Okay. Che grew up in a wealthy family. He traveled while in medical school on a motorcycle with his friends. He saw great poverty, hopelessness, and oppression. This broke his heart. Why? Because Shea was the most morally developed, empathetic, and courageous person you could ever meet. In fact, Satire said that Guevara was a most complete human being of our ages. Really, because that was the guy that said all this stuff I just read, right? He'd kill Christ like Nietzsche. I mean, stomp him like a worm. Well, it's kind of why Christ came, folks. Christ came to, to be... Uh, sacrificed. And that's what all the early Christians were told to do, was lay down your life, not in violence, but in peace. <laughs> but yeah, he's he, he's the most com compassionate, moral person of our age. Yeah, sure. Shea broke down his feelings into love. A true communist revolution is filled with love. And the opposite of this is hate. He hated injustice. And he savored getting rid of Batistas, torturous and uh, torturers and executioners, and Shea basically became that himself. Shea was willing to risk his life for others. He knew that he could be killed in battle, and he accepted this. Ultimately, he would pay the ultimate price: his life in Bolivia. Look, folks, uh, I I've been to war. I knew I could lay down my life in that war. Like this is not, this is just what you do. If you don't come to that understanding, then you can't fight because you, you're, you'll be full of fear. You just have to accept it. It says, Cuba remains a symbol of defiance and solidarity against capitalism and the evils of imperialism. Okay. During the uh, Chernobyl accident, or sorry, during the Chernobyl accident, only one country offered assistance to the children harmed by radiation, Cuba. Cuba sent doctors to help people during national dis uh, disasters, and the spirit of revolution lives on. This is an 86.5% of the people ratified the Cuban Constitution, and they demanded the phrase, we are the socialist nation working towards communism, be inclined to the final draft language. Okay, uh, or included in the final draft language. Okay, but those people, were did they really do it because they thought that they should be doing it, or because if they didn't, there would be consequences? Cuba remains most the most solid Solidly Marxist-Leninist nation in the world, despite being 90 miles off the U.S. coast of Florida. Okay, yes. That uh, means really nothing, though, because they don't, they don't have anything. They live in poverty. They, like, literally live in poverty. They're not developed. They haven't developed anything. They're not better off. In fact, Cuba was a very rich country before um, Castro came in. But, <laughs> you know, let's forget about all that. Their achievement over the decades and a bunch of propaganda talks about uh, in 2014 the unemployment rate was 2.7 percent well when the government makes you work i mean it doesn't mean you work hard it doesn't mean you provide anything it just means that you have a job having a job and, and, and actually producing something are two different things like guys Big secret. I don't have a job right now. I'm unemployed. Okay. I'm producing stuff though. Every week I'm producing these videos and reading these articles to you because it's important. It's very important to me. And so having a job and producing something are not the same thing. Now, maybe I would get paid for this in a communist system. It doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> to, you know, sit there and praise communism, but I probably would be assigned my job. 99% literacy rate. According to who? The Cuban government? Free education from elementary school to university. Okay. Can you leave Cuba though? Can you leave Cuba after you get your education? The propaganda. Every day you have to fight so that love for humanity can be transformed into concrete deeds, into acts that set an example 
that mobilize. Okay. And then onward. The life of a single human being is worth a million times more than all the property of the richest man on earth. Right. Well, that didn't seem to uh, square with some of these other things that you said about having to hate your enemies. About uh, if any person has a good word for the previous government, that is a good enough reason for me to have him shot. Single life is worth more than that wealth, though. This dude is about power and death and destruction. So I'm not going to continue to go through this. There's just quotes, random quotes. Guys, if you want to check this out, go to comradeflanagan.home.blog and check it out. On the other hand, though, here we have America's Future Foundation. This was from 2013. I like this. It's older. Older articles tend to be less biased to the academic nonsense that has come out throughout the uh, recent ages. Now, this is 2013, so it was already within indoctrination years, but still older. I have a PBS article coming up here afterwards. So it says, when Senator Marco Rubio of Florida chastised Jay-Z and Beyonce in a TV interview for their recent trip to Cuba, he especially criticized Jay-Z Jay-Z for his adoration of Che Guevara. I think Shea needs to get informed, Rubio said. One of the heroes is Che Guevara. Che Guevara was a racist. Che Guevara was a racist that wrote ex extensively about the superiority of white Europeans over people of African descent, so he should inform himself about the guy that he's propping up. Interestingly, PolitiFacts, Che Guevara wrote extensively about superiority of white race. PolitiFact says mostly false. Okay. Did she write ex extensively about superiority of white Europeans? Rubio says yes. Well, here it says, I won't rap about it, but I'll say first off that Jay-Z needs to get informed. And then it reads the quote I just said. So then it goes through. Che Guevara's quotes about blacks. And it kind of talks about Shea a little bit. And then it here... Here is the quote. The blacks, those magnificent examples of the African race who have maintained their racial purity thanks to a lack of their affinity with bathing. So, Shea said that because blacks don't bathe, other people don't want to be with them. Therefore, they've kept their racial purity. His words, folks, not mine. That can be found in the Motorcycle Diaries. So blacks are stinky is what Shea is saying. Have seen their territory invade by a new kind of slave. The Portuguese. And the two ancient races have now begun a hard life together, fraught with bickering and squabbles. Discrimination and poverty unite them in the daily fight for survival, but their different way of approaching life separates them completely. The black is idolent, meaning he does nothing. He doesn't work. And a dreamer, meaning, you know, he's sitting around, go do, you know, wouldn't something this be great? Wouldn't that be great? Spending his meager wage on frivolity and drink frivolity folks essentially you know thrills and frills just stupid things the european has a tradition of work and saving which has pursued him as far as this corner of america and drives him to advance himself even independently of his own individual aspirations Here it says another one of Guevara's writings from um, when he was in the Congo. Given the prevailing lack of discipline, it would have been impossible to use Congolese machine gunners to defend the base from air attack. They did not know how to handle their weapons and did not want to learn. Now, not knowing how to handle your weapons is a, is a matter of leadership. Not wanting to learn, that's something else. But... Maybe that's not as racist. Um, we're going to do this for blacks exactly, or going to do for blacks exactly what blacks did for the revolution, by which I mean nothing. 
So then it goes on, experts on Guevara's words. And, you know, you have to be a certain kind of expert to really understand what Shay was saying because reading plain English, you're just not able to do, folks. This is, uh, this is how they gaslight you. Let's look at his motorcycle diaries quotes. Idolent after visiting workers, slums in uh, Caracas. His observations were stereotypical of white, especially Argentina, arrogance and condescendence. condescendence. Anderson wrote in his book. And then he says uh, his diary reflected Argentinians who maybe have a tendency to see themselves very differently from the rest of Latin America. I think it is a stretch to call him a racist. Okay. I don't know if Shea was a racist or not, but uh, it sounds like he didn't look too well upon the black population. And so let's get back to uh, this little article here. It says, Jay-Z, Carlos Santana, and Johnny Depp, who have been spotted in Guevara t-shirts in the last decade, have... As Rubio correctly noted, largely ignored the issue. Yet, some leftist defenders of Guevara do occasionally deal with his troubling issues. A blogger named uh, Faraji uh, Tor, I guess, uh, at Afropunk, a noted and troubling passage from uh, Guevara's 1952 diary. And we just read this. The blacks, the most ex uh, magnificent examples of African race, who have maintained their purity Thanks to their lack of affinity with bathing, have seen da da da, da and blacks as idolent and dreamers spending their meager uh, wage on frivolity. Europeans are different. Just read this. It says uh, Tor is quick to defend Gavar, noting that he was only 24 out of his first experience with the African di diaspora. I mean, fair enough. I'll give him that. People change. Yet, this is an unlikely excuse. John Lee Anderson, who recounts the incident in his off-cited biography, Che Guevara, Revolutionary Life, notes that Che had already visited Trinidad and Brazil prior to making this statement. Indeed, it is quite likely that Che, in his travels, had already encountered um, scores of Latin American and African heritage in Colombia and Bolivia. The other argument often made in defense of Che is that he wrote such racist language before his participation in the Cuban Revolution, and that he subsequently condemned racism. Guevara did that in a number of post-revolutionary speeches after overthrowing Cuban leader, um, I don't, um, Batista. I don't know how to pronounce his first name, folks. Whatever. <laughs> a brief aside about Batista, though, uh, who thought largely forgotten today was just as colorful and ambitious a dictator as Castro uh, brothers of Shea. Batista was a Cuban of uh, Indo, African, Spanish, and Chinese heritage who maintained power with a support of various socialist groups in Cuba and uh, and had during World War II asked the United States to declare war on the fascist Spain. If you all don't really recall, Spain did not participate in World War II because they were going through their own um, civil war leading up to that and they, they really weren't involved and then Franco took over Spain and they were fascist of course as I always state fascism and communism are just brother and sister they're cousins they're two sides of the same coin the coin itself is uh, socialism but you know whether it's heads or tails guys it doesn't matter to me it has nothing to do with liberty it has nothing to do with free markets. It has to do with centralized control, authoritarianism, tyranny, and basically the enslavement of the people. In 1965, writing during his uh, failed involvement in the Congo with his uh, FACO theory of guerrilla war disintegrating around him, Guevara lashed out at his African comrades with a statement, given the privilege, pre prevailing lack of discipline, it would have been impossible to use Congolese machine gunners. We read that already. Guevara had particularly uh, demissive words for to say about the rebel leaders of Lord uh, Kabila. Guevara focused on character flaws of Kabila, noting that he was a hard-drinking womanizer. Given Guevara's own social behavior, as revealed in his diary, sober living was hardly necessary to be a Marxist guerrilla. Guevara's reading of Kabila seemed even more incorrect when he considered that Laurent Kabila 
uh, without the help of Cuba, eventually seized power in 1997. His son, Joseph, still rules the Democratic Republic of Congo to this day. The racist passage in uh, Shea's diary also su surprisingly given that they were certainly censored before release. Right? Because that's what they do. Remember the um, Mao's Little Red Book, as I read to you before, passages from, was essentially edited here recently. And the guy that originally came up with it later on, about a decade later or two, was, uh, it was used against him. <laughs> like, when do you folks learn? Indeed, the diary of Guevara's time, uh, the Congo, was only released by the Castro regime in 2002. Interesting. Jeanette Alcon, whose grandfather was a member of the unite, uh, or sorry, the unit that eventually captured Che Guevara in Bolivia, has a rather uh, offered his rather balanced view of Guevara's racial history. Che Guevara was a doctor that helped villages cope with leprosy before the revolution. Alcon told Doublethink, a lot of the villages had indigenous people living in them. I don't think he was a racist per se, but then again, I don't think he cared much for the Bolivian people. Communism needed to be spread, and Bolivia was seen as ripe for communist revolution. Shea's view on uh, racism smack a similar political opportunism, when it was useful to abandon his previous racial views to fight in the Cuban Revolution. He readily did so. When it was convenient to use racial stereotypes to castinate his uh, Col Colgonese comrades um, and cover up the deficiencies of his fellow Cubans, he didn't hesitate. Again, this is typical leftist type tactics. It doesn't matter. Uh, might makes right and justify the means. Do whatever it will. Uh, well, I just quoted Al Alistair Crawley there. Do what thou willst. That is the whole of the law. As Aurister Crawley, the Satanist, not Anton LaVey, fake Church of Satan, like LARPing stuff, like Aurister Crawley, folks. Go back, learn your uh, occultism. Do what thou willst, and that's what they do. That's what the leftists do. When I say the things I do and they sound hyperbolic, look, I can back up every statement I make. It doesn't mean that these people are overtly Satanist or demonic or whatever else, at least in their own mind, that they're conscious of it. What I'm saying is, is that their behavior is that of these people who espouse these ideas. I operate my life on first principles, though. I view things from first principles. I don't make excuses. I don't come up with little caveats of why this is that and that is this and they're not exactly the same. No, they are the same. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's the idea that we keep things simple, stupid, right? Uh, make them as simple as possible, but no more simple. In fact, an increasing number of modern leftists and the left anarchists are likely to see Shea at, not as a revolutionary area, but one of a long line of communist murderers of the 20th century. She should be remembered for the political terror he was involved in and, political, and politically defended a number of occasions. This was a man who was a defender of the North Korean regime and who deeply mourned the death of Joseph Stalin. Now, let's talk about um, uh, Yamin Park, who escaped North Korea. Um, if you, I can't recall the name of her book off the top of my head. Sitting downstairs, I wish I had it with me. But let's, let's, Yamin Park, look her up. She escaped North Korea. She was so terrorized that she believed dear leader, dear leader while she was living in North Korea, could read her mind. This is how brainwashed these people become. And that should tell you something about the left today. See, if a person in a totalitarian dictatorship communist style country or fascistic country whatever whatever flavor of ice cream you want today they're both ice cream they're neapolitan folks neapolitan ice cream you get all three flavors you get communism socialism and fascism all wrapped up in the one whatever when you you are dealing with people who are of are of these ideologies they are ideologically possessed i know i talk about it all the time this is the stuff that jordan peterson talks about this is the stuff that carl jung talked about in Carl Jung's book, The Undiscovered Self, it is 
probably the the most easy uh, read that Jung ever put out because it was made for the layman. But in the undiscovered self, he he's trying to give people a purpose and understanding that the only way you're going to fight these totalitarian uh, regimes, these ideologies, these things, these mind viruses that possess the spirit, your attitude, is to be an individual. Yamin Park thought when she lived in Korea, North Korea that is, dear leader could read her mind and if she thought the wrong things that she would be taken away, kidnapped, beaten, tortured, never to be seen again, whatever else. You know, it, it is incredible how horrible these ideologies go. And yet, there are people here in America, in the United States, in other Western countries that espouse them like it's nothing. I mean, I'll get on Reddit just for a few minutes. I can't stand to get on there too long. And I will see people arguing about communism and socialism, and how horrible the capitalists are. And they don't even know what capitalism is. And then they'll make excuses and say, no, no, no. You're manipulating people to do this. Well, you're forcing people to work. You are no more moral, folks. In fact, capitalism, at least free market capitalism as I see it, which we do not have in the West, by the way, but we have a largely free market capitalist system. Free market capitalism is completely volunteer and on all sides. You do not get to speak for me and say, oh, well, you can't you can't work for this guy or you can't work for that guy or it's wrong that you work for him and you do the things. You're, he's taking advantage of you. I'll decide for myself who is taking advantage of me and who is not. And you should too. So let's see here. Even sympathetic biographers such as John Anderson conceded that she oversaw many executions at Cuba's notorious La Cabana uh, prison following the 1959 revolution. Though the exact number of killed is unclear, thousands were killed in Cuba's post-revolutionary purge and forced labor camps. This is why, by the way, folks, we have a lot of uh, Latin Americans, former Cubans, voting for Trump because they don't want Kamala Harris's progressive agenda. There is even some evidence that Guevara personally carried out some of the murders associated with the revolutionary period. As the Huffington Post points out, Guevara helped, or sorry, hoped the Soviets would launch nuclear attacks on American cities for the same reason, uh, confident that the communists would win such a war. Thus, the best reason for condemning Guevara is, uh, isn't the racist statements buried away in some diaries but very visible blood on his hands. I would agree. This uh, this guy, though, this apologist says he was the most morally developed individual, empathetic and courageous person you will ever meet. Okay, buddy. I'm sure you have a dark heart. <laughs> so here, this is uh, PBS.org, the legacy of Ernesto Che Guevara. Now, as you can see here, this is from 1997. I like it. Like, like America was half normal then, you know? We were getting ready to vote in, uh, getting ready to vote in OGW. And uh, Slick Willie was doing his thing. And uh, times were pretty decent, actually. Times were pretty decent. Fearing that Shea's burial place would become a shrine to the fallen guerrilla leader, the Bolivian army officer secretly disposed of his remains, Shea's body, excluding his hands, which were amputated for positive identification. And those of his comrades were buried in a mass grave near the uh, Villa Grande airstrip in central Bolivia. But rather than destroy the myth of Shea, sorry guys, this is rather large for me. We'll get that a little bit smaller. Rather than uh, what did it say here? Bolivia army officer secretly disposed of his remains and those of his comrades 
but rather than destroy the myth of Shay, the uh, circumstances surrounding his death only intensified it. In Asia, Latin America, and Africa, Marxist guerrilla movement embraced his image as a symbol of revolutionary struggle. Shea Guevara in Western Europe and Northern America, protesting college students, invoked his image in defiance to the Vietnam War, racism, and anything considered the establishment. Shea's image, bearded and wearing a single red star studded beret, became an international symbol of revolt and revolutionary idealism. Look, man, I used to wear a Shea shirt because it was a Rage Against the Machine shirt, but I knew nothing about it. And I was in my early 20s. I didn't really know anything about him. I was not um, super into world politics or, or, or whatever at the time. I knew communism was bad and I knew fascism was bad. And I was essentially a, you know, card-carrying Republican. I was never quite a neocon, but... Um, yeah, I was conservative, but I didn't know enough about these things. We do a horrible job in our schools teaching our children these things. 30 years later, Shea still fascinates and confounds, uh, or, yeah, still fascinates and confounds in Cuba in 1997, is observed as the year of the 30th anniversary of the death and combat of the heroic guerrilla and his comrades. On October 12, 1997, after his remains were unearthed in Bolivia, Shea's body was returned to Cuba, where he is now buried in the town of Santa Carla. Oh, how wonderful. Despite the official celebration honoring the fallen hero, many experts believe that the Cuban government is more interested in promoting Shea's image than his actual ideas, many of which conflict with Cuba's current state policies. But the Cuban government is not alone in the plundering of Shea's legacy. Everyone from Hollywood to athletic equipment manufacturers are crashing in on the fallen revolutionary's image, if not his principles. In addition to being the topic of several upcoming feature films and the subject of several new biography released this year, Che Guevara's image itself has been, become a formidable marketing tool. Che Guevara, a few years ago, Swatch, the Swiss manufacturer of watches, released a revolutionary model of their watch adorned with Che's image on it. That's just gross. Um, let's skip down here though. Yeah. It talks, talks about things, rage against the machine, blah, 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 blah. From posters, to even a short lived beer in London marketing, potential symbol, pop icon. And then we get to John Lee Anderson. So we can see he's the chief apologist here. And, uh, Che Guevara, a revolutionary life. And former reporter of the Lima Times in Peru, Mr. Anderson, working over the last five years, gained unprecedented access to both Shea's personal archives through his window and to formerly sealed Cuban government archives. And it says, 30 odd years after the death of Shea, many Cubans like myself are perplexed by the attention given to the man we knew well enough to despise. Why should this man who preached the virtues of cold-blooded hate as a weapon of revolution who was the executioner of many innocent all the way from the Sierra uh, Mastrea and the uh, Cuba, uh, Cabana prison, and who ultimately betrayed the revolution he rode to fame and misfortune, be the subject of so much attention? What has Shea to offer today besides a commercial opportunity? Why all this attention? Why now? He talks about the characterization and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to go through this whole thing because, you know, I got enough stuff. So here, John Brown's ghost. Race trader scum shoots the uh, ass and heart of Dixie. Uh, John Brown, by the way, folks, I know there's a John Brown gun club and he's seen as this great abolitionist. John Brown was a terrorist, folks. He, he literally was. He, was he, he terrorized people. It, you, you can be an abolitionist. I mean, it's great. There are plenty of people who were abolitionists who weren't violent that's the problem is the violence take it from me someone who has had a profession of violence so it says a tertiary effect of mandela's death has been uh or mandela's death has been the reactivation of right-wing criticism of Che Guevara, the argentinian cuban cuban revolutionary hero in an effort to slur both the south african leader has been uh 
liberally quoted praising the latter. Critics have drawn their own siege parallel between the two legacies, Psalm W. Mandala, the Che Guevara of Africa. Yeah, Mandala, uh, 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 Mandala, I keep saying Mandala, Mandela. <laughs> Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. That's why he was imprisoned. He wasn't a political prisoner, folks. He was a terrorist. He used to give people the... Uh, the old necklace, the old tire necklace, where they put tires around you and then put uh, gasoline on, on the tires and then burn you alive. He did that. He bombed people. He was a terrorist, folks. Because he's seen as a communist, he's praised, though. So here we go through this again. He says the, the quotes, black idol and all that stuff. He says, so... So what to make of this? In context, this is a young man's single private impression on seeing black people for the first time. Well, I already debunked that. We debunked that back here in this article. So it's going to go on debunking that he was, you know, uh, he was a racist. It says, in 1964, addressed to the UN, Shea rallied against color segregation in American South, which... Uh, persisted despite the recent passage of Voting Rights Act, arguing the federal government hadn't done enough to restrain the KKK. And he says, those killing their own children and discriminating daily against those because of their color of their skin, those who are murderers and blacks remain free to protect them. Da -da 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 -da. All right, well, you can find that here. This is his UN address right here. Just go to Marxist.org, Che Guevara at the United Nations. You can read the whole thing. People can say things, folks. You can say whatever you like to say, you know, it doesn't mean that you're virtuous. I know in today's culture, saying things and doing the right things, like if I put on a mask, if I wear a mask, I'm virtuous. You know, Kamala Harris's husband came up yesterday after the debate and came up to greet Kamala with a mask on. What silliness? You live with the woman. Who are you infecting? Well, it might spray or it might go airborne. Well, it doesn't protect from airborne particles. That's not how that works. You need an M95. Um, but yeah, I mean, just not to be long. I'm just saying, there, there, I, I can't read through all this. I have a few more articles just to show you. And the next one I really, really, really want to get to. But I do want to show you, though, there are apologists. And right here it says, the critical error behind almost all reasoning about racial profiling for terrorists, if black people can say the N-word, why can't I? And related discussions. Well, black people use it as a word of power. What? Come on, man. It's One, it's a word. So let's not give it that much power. Two. Two. I don't really care what people want to say. I've known plenty of white dudes to say it to black people and black people back in jest having fun. I worked in a jail for a long time. That's what they call each other. They drop the N-bomb. And I mean hard R, not just with the A. It, it, it It's... Get out of get out of dodge, guys! Like you, you don't even you don't even know. You you sit up on an ivory tower somewhere and you think this is the thing, and then you write this thing. You think that Nelson Mandela and John Brown were good people. They weren't. They would they would murder you if they thought it it gave them political advantage. It's a pretty horrible thing, folks. And maybe you believe that too. You're probably a horrible person as well. All right. So from the Huffington Post, this is from 2017. Are you gay? Che Guevara would have sent you to a concentration camp. Things people like to forget. Today, after 50 years of uh, his death, many people still remember uh, Che as a warrior for social justice for so many celebrities, politicians, and activists. By the way, the Huffington Post, folks, very left wing. Che Guevara is a kind of good Samaritan who fought against oppression and tyranny. It is unfortunate, though, that these people ignore some of their idols' defining character traits. And it says Che Guevara was, in fact, an intolerant and despicable man. In the process of building a communist society after Fidel Castro came to power in uh, 59 in Cuba, one of the ideas Che Guevara presented and promoted was the notion that of the new man. This concept grew out of Guevara's aversion to capitalism, and was first explained in his note, The Man and Socialism in Cuba. He believed that the individual under socialism is more complete, and that the state should educate men and women in anti-capitalist, cooperative, selfless, and non-materialistic values. 
That, by the way, reads exactly like something out of the doctrines of fascism. It's exactly what Mussolini said. Anyone who deviated from the new man was seen as a counter-revolutionary. Now, this idea of a new man, of course, no doubt, we're, we're getting right here. It says, in fact, if Christ himself stood in my way, I, like Nietzsche, would not hesitate to squash him like a worm. So, what we're seeing here is, is that Shea was a fan of Nietzsche. You know who else was a fan of Nietzsche? The Nazis. Yeah, yeah, baby. That's right, the Nazis. Uh, a lot of the whole idea of the Uberman is the same thing. It actually means the new man, the Superman, um, the man that doesn't need the old ways, the old systems, and doesn't need a god for that matter. And as Shea said, he would murder Christ. I'm more than certain he was an atheist. Let's see. Anyone who deviated from the new man was seen as a counter-revolutionary. Such was the case of gay men. By the way, the uh, this is the same thing that Mao talked about in his little red book. So anyone who is against our revolution is an enemy of the revolution. And therefore, they're, they're morally unjustified and you are morally justified to murder them. Whom Guevara referred to as sexual perverts, both Guevara and Castro considered homosexuality as bourgeois decadency. In an interview in 1965, Castro explained that a uh, deviation of that natural uh, nature clashes with the concept we have with what a militant communist should be. Now, folks, I, I just want to bring to attention to you that... We have people that are uh, we have people that are claiming they're Marxists out in the streets. They are toppling statues. That I actually haven't seen any of that in a while, but they were toppling statues, graffiti, and doing whatever, burning down places, all this stuff. And they're saying that all the founding fathers who tried to give all men equal rights, liberty. It, uh, don't get me wrong; it took a while because we didn't always live up. People did not did not always live up to to these ideals. But they wanted to set all men free, and they started off on an experiment to do so. And over time, the American experiment has worked. And, uh, you know, as Dave Rubin once uh, said, or has said many a times, what nation has ended slavery quicker? You can't find one. I promise. America was born into slavery through the Brits and got rid of it very quickly and had to fight a war over it. They didn't have to, but they did. The war was actually largely about secession more than slavery, but that's an aside. Maybe I'll cover that sometime. My point though is, is that those people were saying, well, they were slaveholders. They were this, they were that. Yet these people were against homosexuals. They were potentially racist. They were murderers and whatever else that they were. And they'll excuse them all night and day because they have the right religion. And that religion is communism. That religion is collectivism. That religion is uh, might makes right. So, let's see. Che Guevara also helped establish the first Cuban concentration camp. And uh, and, and a word I'm not going to try and pronounce. <laughs> you can read it here. Guanajuato. Bibis? I don't know. I don't speak Spanish, folks. So 1960, this was a camp, uh, was the first of many. From the Nazis, the Cuban government also adopted from the Nazis the motto Auschwitz, uh, work sets you free, changing it to work will make you men. From the Nazis, these are the same kind of ideologies, folks. They're just executed differently. According to uh, Alvario Vargas Loso, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Afro-Cuban priests, and others who were believed to have committed a crime against revolutionary morals, huh, I just brought that up, interesting, were forced to work in the camps to correct their antisocial behavior. Many of them died. Others were tortured or raped. Guevara exposed also uh, uh, racist views in his diary, yada, yada, yada. Um, 
And the article, my cousin El Shea, Alberto uh, Benegas Lynch, uh, describes how Shea enjoyed torturing animals, a trait common to a serial killer. His record of murdering and torturing people is intensive. Researchers have documented 216 victims of Shays in Cuba from 1956 to 1959. Now, even the greatest serial killers could not do such a number. Suspicion was that uh, suspicion was all that was needed to end a life. There was no need for a trial because he said the revolution could not be stopped to conduct much investigation. It has to uh, it has the obligation to triumph. So, serial killer traits, torturing animals, 216 murders. Now, he was a doctor, but was he a doctor because he... Uh, was he a doctor because he wanted to learn anatomy and how to be a more proficient killer? Maybe it didn't matter to him, I don't know. He'd have done more good for the world as a doctor, but his heart was dark and evil, folks. His heart was quite dark and evil. Unlike this statement here, where this this uh, this fool says he was filled with love. The opposite of this is hate. He hated injustice and savored getting rid of it. Torturers and executioners, yet he became one. And he was willing to risk his life for others. He knew he could be killed in battle, but he accepted ultimately... Oh, that's not quite what I was looking for. I was looking for this. The most morally developed, empathetic, and courageous person you would ever meet. And then I would bring you back to this quote up here. You know, that he... Uh, <laughs> blind hate against the enemy creates a forceful impulse that cracks the boundaries of human... Uh, the natural human limitations. I agree with you, Shay. That's the problem. We have people out in the streets with blind hate and rage. Transforming the soldiers in an effective, selective, and cold killing machine. People without hate cannot triumph against an adversary. You know who else did this? The Nazis versus the Jews. You know who's doing this right now in our streets? Antifa and BLM. And they're blaming white folk. So, look, I had some more articles here. Let's see. I got, yeah, most of them are... Uh, let me go over to this Huffington Post article real quick. It says, El Shea, the crass marketing of a sadistic racist. This is from 2002. So again, I'm not going to, I actually don't want to really cover this because I've kind of gone over most of this. Here is an article again, Shea Guevara myths, the truth about the racist homophobic murderer opinion. So this is from the Inquisitor. This is from 2017. Here is debunking Shea. This is from antiimperialism.org. So this is a pro Shea. You know, Shea Guevara was a racist. This is a lie. Dude, you can't prove it's a lie. You can't prove against it. Either way, he was a horrible person. And then here, this is from um, Women Against Feminism UK. The feminist uh, Simone... Uh, uh, Bob, I, I'm whatever. <laughs> French names, not good. Met the rapist Che Guevara and dictator Fidel Castro, and talks about he's a hipper, hipster icon, and uh, the truth about the psychopath is more relevant. Uh, he was Simone de Bois. That's how you say that, I believe. Fred Simone was a popular socialist, feminist, guru, and wealthy person. Of course, she was a socialist and wealthy person. She said, a world where men and women would be equal is easy to visualize, for that precisely is what the Soviet Revolution promised. Simone de Beauvoir, uh, the second sex. Simone went to Cuba, met with Fidel Castro and the killer Shea. Shea was Fidel Castro's chief executioner, mass murderer, who in theory had, could have had commanded any number of Latin American death squads from Peru's shining path on the political left to Guatemala's white hand on the right. That's actually interesting how that's framed. I'm going to bring that up real quick. Um, because I believe this is an old news article. Well, let me let that load. I'll keep reading this. Fidel is a communist dictator and imprisoned in Cuba in the 1950s. People are um, 
People are killed and tortured for their opinions about Cuba. No free speech is allowed. Fidel is an old, evil tyrant. Blah, 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 blah. From his diaries, more quotes. And then talks about Jay-Z and his nonsense. She was also homophobic. Shay and Castro sent gays to uh, re-education camps. And certain that Guevara contributed to the homophobic culture that made the repression of homosexuals in Cuba. What about LGBT right activists think of it? Right, they're all hypocrites. They don't care. It's 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 the uh, it's the movement, you know. And by the way, folks, there are plenty of gay people on the right. So Che Guevara is an anti-capitalism symbol. Yes, they are useful idiots. The culture of Ernesto Che Guevara is an episode in the moral uh, callousness of our time. Che was a totalitarian, a socialist, psychopath, racist, rapist, and homophobe. He achieved nothing but disaster. Che's own words are enough to condemn him. A revolutionary must become a cold killing machine motivated by pure hate. We will bring the war to the imperialist enemy very home to his place of work and recreation. Uh, recreation. We must never give him a minute of peace or tranquility. This is a total war to the death. That sounds familiar because that's what the left does now. The places of work and recreation. You know, Black Lives Matter is in your face about... Um, whoa, that didn't work out. They're in your face about... Um, at restaurants on sidewalks say say it say black lives matter anyways here any white hand of terror grows in central uh, america the rightist ku klux klan type terrorist organization spawned in guatemala now has propped up a neighboring el, el salvador observers are wondering if the spread of the mano blanco white hand the anti-communist vigilant group me or vigilante group means the eventual expansion through central america interesting how back then Right, this is an old, old newspaper. Let me see. Um, I can get a date here. Uh, so this is December 4th, 1967. So interesting back then that they were comparing them to the Ku Klux Klan. Already the left was saying the Ku Klux Klan were right wing. Now we know that they are left wing. They've always been left wing. In fact, tomorrow's video, we're going to talk about that. Been work, we've been preparing all week for this one. Love it. Love it, folks, because I get to give you some education on things if you you weren't aware. And uh, you can sit down with me and listen to me ramble for a good hour or so. And uh, it, it, you can share it with friends and you can see the craziness and how all these revolutionary evil movements that have killed hundreds of thousands of people in the last century, literally 200 plus 300,000 people have died because of these movements. Or sorry, thousand thousand there's my misspeak right 300 200 to 300 million million people many of whom were just starved to death merely starved to death you can see where these things go so here it talks about the nuclear missile factor all that guys like shay was not a good person not a good person at all. And uh, I'm kind of going to, I'm going to wrap it up there because I'm, I'm uh, 50 minutes in or so, but guys realize, realize who these revolutionaries are, realize who's being praised, understand these people are either useful idiots, they're pawns, they don't know any better. They're actually taught not to know any better and mostly taught propaganda to apologize for murderous evil folks and what's going on in the united states is just wrong and it's horrible and when people say this is the most important election of our time they're literally true the the, the elections haven't really mattered that much since i'd say ronald reagan they really haven't now you could say bush you know whatever but i mean obama just kept up bush's um, wars and those weren't even Bush's wars folks those those were the deep states wars those were the globalist wars that's the the globalists trying to get the Middle East in line but uh I don't know guys you you can believe what you want to believe go look this stuff up yourself don't take my word for it I'm not here to uh to say I know all or everything but I I do know that I have a good good understanding of the realities of of life in history and uh with all that hey guys 
you want to watch a live show, the ends underscore justify underscore memes is my other channel. The ends justify the memes over on YouTube. Live shows are on DLive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. I do have a subscribe star for all minus one. Um, and hey, it's been all minus one. Please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Help me out. Help me grow. Help me get the word out, guys. If you like my content, um, hopefully it keeps improving. Hopefully I keep getting better at this. And I uh, wish you all well.